going on, everyone? I'm a, my name's JT. I'm Laurent. And welcome back to The Break Zone. As we give you live, up-to-date coverage of the Petite Cup here in Los Angeles, California. We're really, really excited to bring you all the upcoming action. Players are already seated. The draws are already here. We're just about to get into the Swiss World Run. Laurent, tell me a little bit about what you're expecting to see today. Uh, it's... I really don't know, actually. That's the exciting it's part. Crazy. It's, it's really Opus exciting, 4, right? It's a brand new meta. It's wide open. Right. Uh, some of the things that used to be pretty oppressive have been Im you're able to get around it with uh, with monsters. We're talking about Al Cid. We're talking about uh, Renoa. Yeah. So, Renoas. Hey. We're talking yeah. about you know Shantotos. Oh yeah. They're not going to work on monsters because they're not boards on your opponent's turn. So you know you can get past them. You get a lot of things going on right here. And it's really exciting to see how a lot of these players are going to fold the monster play that's new in Opus 4 into their decks and how they're going to play around it because board control is such an important thing in this game. I um, mean, when you get boards coming out that are huge and strong, a lot of players default back to things like bounce, like, mm -hmm. like Leviathans, things like Odins and whatnot. Mm -hmm. You can't really play that on monsters right now because they're not forwards. They're characters, so the Dark Emperor will come into play, but we'll see how many people are actually running Dark Emperor. What do you think? Dark Emperor is a very strong card. I always think about playing it in my decks, and then after that, I worry about protecting him well enough. I mean, it's also a, light, a dark card. Yeah. And so you have the issue of light and dark cards not being able to pitch them for CP. Right, right. And he doesn't have a special, so a spare copy of Dark Emperor in your hand with the doesn't Dark Emperor really play. Do yeah, doesn't it, really it might hold you back. But it, it's, it's going to stop, it's, it's going to be a huge play against monsters because they're going to have to play around it. So I'm right. really excited to see how people are going to try to use these monsters. Some of them are really, really strong. Some of them, and if you wanted an idea about what we think is a good monster, we just posted a video up on uh, last night talking about some of our favorite monsters in Opus 4. Go ahead and check it out to help refresh your mind a little bit as we walk through a lot of these, these competitors. And we are seeing some very familiar faces here. Faces yeah. from, you know, uh, nationals, faces from local metas. It's really exciting to see everyone come together for the Petite Cup. The prize support has been amazing. Sport Enix and the Meta Potion has thrown an amazing event. And we are really proud and very humbled to be covering this for you guys today. Thank you for joining us. All right, thank you. Yep, we're going to go ahead and jump right into round one. Players are ready to go. Um, you know, please stick tuned and we'll be, we'll be here chatting on everybody. Let us know. Let us know what you think is going to be played. Let us know, you know, what you're excited to see. And, and you know, Opus 4 just came out. So this is the first major event when we're going to start getting a lot of Opus 4 play. So I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out. You know, a lot of people are seeing this as, as, a, as, as a precursor to, to regionals or, a, a, you know, as we move forward and whatnot. And if the indi indication of the pre-release says anything, is Opus 4 is going to be amazing. All right, so it looks like we're about to start. So we're going to go and jump on in. And uh, thanks again for tuning in. Will be brought up here. Come see me. Uh, I will be your lost Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, last time I had a great collection of uh, awesome colored dice. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks again for joining us here at the Break Zone. We have uh, Alejandro here on our left side and uh, Brian on our right side. Just about to start round one. It's going to be very exciting. Players are players are just about to start right now. All right, everybody. All right, we are here, so players are ready to go. Dice have been rolled. They look Dice like pre release rolls. rolls. All right, we'll see who goes first. Really exciting to see what's going on here. Okay, up, oh, yeah. oh, five cards. All right, players. All right, as you know, in Final Fantasy, uh, players go, can go ahead and mulligan, and cards will go straight to the bottom in any order you want, and you get to draw five more in the top. Um, we know Brian from our local meta up in uh, Northern California. He is a very, very strong player. Um, excited to see what he's brought today um, and all these new spicy brews we're going to see. Looks like Brian's going to go ahead and I'd like to go first. And he's going to go ahead and... Right, he's going to play right into the, the, the new uh, Water Summoner mm -hmm. from Opus, uh, Opus 4. We're going to go and bring that up so everyone can tell and take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Alright, it looks like... Okay, he passed the turn and oh, pitching two cards in order to play a devout first turn devout. Wow, first turn devout is a 
it's a oh, risky, and there is a, a Terra in the break zone. If you we want to bring that back in the break zone, turn, we see that played a, a lot. Um, you might oh. be able to get that Terra back. And there we go. We've got a. It looks like um, we're playing into like a no no. Ooh, no no deck already. A no no deck. Wow, one of the new things. Let's go ahead and take a look at the no no, um, and we'll, we'll see uh, what Let's Brian's trying to do here. Well, no no is usually thought of as a combo card with the card Zemus, and we'll see if he's going to try to get by unblocked whenever he attacks with, a, with one of his forwards, allowing <coughs> Nono to trigger in order for Zemus to activate again, allowing him to attack with another unblockable forward. Alright, oh, it, looks like, it looks like Alejandro's playing into a ghoul, which is uh, a new ice uh, monster that's going to let you dole other uh, forwards. Strong, I'm ex actually wondering what Brian's trying to do here. Oh, well, the no should be a, de a clear indicator that he wants to activate his backups. Right. Best one would definitely be Zima, right. so let's see what Looks he's going like to do he's with that. Looks like he's going to pitch that Yuna and play right into the uh, forward Yuna from Opus 2. Oh. Is that a forward Yuna? Oh, it is the forward Yuna, the legendary right. Yuna. Right, it's the legendary Yuna. Um, we're we're going to need to see what, what he's going to do here because he can oh. attack and then he can keep um, activating backups um, and they'll blank everybody when she attacks. So definitely, uh, that's a strong move. Let's let's see. I think that's an indicator that he is gonna play Zemus in his deck. I right. mean, if he gets to attack unblocked with Yuna, he can blank everybody's cards. Correct. Right. Right. And that's, that's gonna, gonna be, be very powerful play. Oh, and the Genesis comes out right Ooh. away. That's gonna be. Does well, he have an answer to that? Brian's next? gonna have to answer that, or he's gonna start to hit the scars. Genesis is still a strong card. Um, I don't know if I'm going to see. A, we're going to see a lot of play with him because there's so many newer cards in Ice that do that do something similar, like Loke. Um, but we'll, let's see what he uh, what Brian does here. It's really interesting. He's going to have a tough time. He's going to want to put up two forwards in order to get by that ghoul. Otherwise, he's going to have to discard a card. Exactly, because that ghoul's going to dole something down, even if he brings something out. Um, and we're seeing a lot of the early tempo play that Mono Ice brings to you here. Um, it's, it's interesting to see because. It looks like unless he brings out two, like you said, he's gonna be he's gonna be taking oh. some damage and losing hard. And there's he a Riku. Out the Riku, but he doesn't have no a Yuna. Oh, actually, he does. Have, he does have a Yuna. Oh, he does. He's protected from right. So that forward Riku will be protected from summons. Right, right. But right. not abilities. Not he abilities. Not abilities. And that Ghoul is really gonna start doing some work here. We'll see if he actually wants to do that. I mean, he's gonna have to pay for it to do right, it. Right, right. No, but it would, should be worthwhile. A lot of ice players used to splash lightning just to get a card like Amon in to get some of this tempo play. But now that we have a monster with Ghoul, that's that's a really, really uh, strong card to play here. Yeah, I mean, Ghoul is a lot more difficult to get rid of because there's only so many cards that can get rid of straight up characters or monsters. Uh, uh, the monster removal cards. Oh. It looks let's like he's see. gonna take a look at that. Um, let's go ahead and take Ooh. a look at Ghoul and see what's going on here. All right. Uh, I don't think he played the Ghoul for that. I think he was. Did no. he try to cast a summon? Uh, no, he's just going to take a look at the, okay, okay. the Riku and see what his options are right now. Both right. both players are playing into their backups. We're not seeing a lot of early game aggression. That Genesis does tend to lend itself very well to to early game aggression. So we'll see if uh, Alejandro can take advantage of the uh, the tempo he has now. All right. Looks like he's making a decision. Oh, wait. We'll see. We, we see that he has the snow in his, in his hand. Looks like he's going to pitch it. He's going to go, right, wow, he's going to pitch go. the snow to dole the Riku. Crack he's going to crack Get that the to bring in the Terra. I don't know if that... Oh, so she's going to go ahead and, and freeze. Okay. He's going to go ahead and use... Got it. Breaking oh, both of them. Oh, he did double the, the damage. Right, because they're... Wow, that is a strong move right there. Very, very good play. He just board wiped him with a he devout. He just board wiped him. Wow, with a devout. That is a really, really aggressive play. He's got, he's got board control right now. Um, oh, clearly. Uh, I mean, you can see Brian is going to have a hard time now because not only is he going to have to put a forward that can deal with being dulled by Ghoul, he right. also wants to be able to block that Genesis. Right. Otherwise, his card, the amount of cards he's gonna have to discard, is gonna keep piling up every time, every turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's an archer. Ooh. Don't know if you want to play the long game on this one. I mean, the archer is going to be able to break the duke, but at this point, you're, I would be more worried about blocking the forwards. Tough decisions being made. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
So we got to bring up the Terra there, and that was just a really strong play. Wow, he's going to go ahead and bring the Yuna. Is he going to... Bounce the Terra or Bounce the Genesis? I would... Wow. Um, it's a hard decision. We play that Ice. Both of them have on-field, you know, abilities, and it's hard to just bounce anything. Um, mm -hmm. But because, you know, bouncing the, the Genesis would probably prove to be worse, it looks like um, Brian's going to go ahead and take a couple damages. Segito, I believe, in the break zone, uh, in the damage zone. Right. Is he going to be able to stop that Genesis? That's that's going to be a tough call. Ghoul and Genesis, Len, Len to really work well together. Oh, and oh, now and he's and bringing snow. out the snow. Ooh. So now it looks like Alejandro can really deal with, you know, two um, forwards and still be able to swing and keep causing Brian to discard. He brings out a Waka. I don't know if that Waka is going to do much much help for him right now because it's just going to well, get... At least Alejandro, with only one backup available at the point, he's going to have to discard every time he wants to Right, go. yeah, and you know, that snow is just really... That snow is really going to reap damage on a, on a one forward board uh, that, that, that Brian is using right now. Um, okay, let's see. He's going to go ahead and dole that uh, Waka when priority is passed so that he can use the ghoul again if need be he's gonna oh. go ahead and attack with the genesis um causing the brian to discard oh, he wow he hit the ex burst on oh, the a veil for a veil for on the ex but that's burst. not enough that's, that's not quite nope, enough no nope, the duke large just keeps the, the log but a seat of his pants keeps it just fine but he is going to get that ex burst where he gets to um activate all of his backups he's going to go ahead and swing that's going to be two more points of damage putting brian at four Brian looks to be in a lot of trouble here. He's, he's facing a lot of tempo right now. I'm not sure what he has available to him in order to... Wow, he's playing the oh. Shiva to play a Jill, Jill. and is going to freeze that Waka. Right now, Brian is looking at Fatal on the board unless he can do something um, to combat all of this... all of this, uh, this tempo. His only forward is Frozen. Um, I mean, playing the Jill right here was... Kind of a good thing for Ale was actually amazing for Alejandro. Right. Not only did he need the backup, but he also wanted the freeze exactly, second Exactly, exactly. It would be better if, if she was able to freeze two. Oh, but yeah. right now, I think it's a calculated play on Alejandro's end because he's going to be able to, um, he's going he's, he's going to be able to to uh, swing for win right now unless oh, the only two two damage out of four. So right, he's still right. got another turn after that. Oh, looks like Brian's got to play here. He's going to oh, go ahead and Sildra both of them back, which is okay. But right now, I think Alejandro's going to go ahead and play that Genesis and Dole Freeze that Waka all over again. Correct. But otherwise, and he was just going to have to discard that card. So Yes, well exactly. So he's probably going to go ahead and pitch a card, if I'm, if I'm reading this play correctly. He's going to play... Right, he's going to play that Genesis. Um, I would have pitched an extra just to play Snow as well. But um, Brian... Brian on the seat of his pass with that cylinder, very expensive, but you know, because snow is right, so see. inexpensive to cast. I mean, yeah, it is well, the I only thing. I see a Chaos Walker and a Pain. Yeah, let's see Let's see if Brian can do something. He knows that Alejandro has a, has a snow in his pocket. And with the Ghoul out, he's got tempo um, all throughout this board, board state right now. I think he's gonna double up. He's gonna play the Pain, draw the card, and use that card to play the Chaos Walker when Genesis tries to swing in. Right. Let's see how Alejandro is going to respond. Wouldn't it be better to play that now before he drew? Because Chaos Walker is going to let you play another forward. Um, you can well, give him two also, extra cards. But also play by uh, playing the Chaos Walker, while he, Alejandro tries to attack, he can now play the forward that he plays will not be able to attack that turn. This is true. This is true. He's going to go ahead and wow discard the snow to dole. Okay, um, I would have definitely kept the snow on the board, but he is going to swing, and here comes the Chaos Walker. There you go. He's going to Chaos Walker the... Right, he's going to Chaos Walker the Genesis. Uh, Genesis. Does Alejandro have something that he can play? Let's see. I mean, sitting at two backups, it's not, it's not too bad, but definitely he, he was... And this, and this, is, and this is the problem when you're playing with ice. Um, is that you, you tend to run out of steam mm -hmm. after after you know so many so many rounds. So I really don't know if that discarding the snows 
just a dole was worth it. Um, I would have kept board presence, but we'll see what Alejandro's going to do here. Because um, now that Brian has set up his backup line, mm -hmm. he's got the Yuna, he's got the Summoner, um, mm -hmm. you know, he's got the Waka and the Archer. So, I mean, um, another thing that happened was that when the Chaos Walker hit, Alejandro did not get to play a Ford because he discarded Snow. Right, right. So that right. would have been pretty useful as well. Right. With the Terra, he fetched uh, Opus 4 Shiva. Let's see if he wants to play it out now or if he wants to keep it up for later. Well, I don't know. It's, it's going to be difficult. Oh, oh, looks like he's going to play it later. This gives Brian a bit of a chance, actually. Um, oh, Yuna back up stop playing from playing forward. Right, That's correct. Right. Uh, I forgot about interaction between Chaos Walker and the... Because it's not going to the break zone, exactly. Correct. Correct. Exactly. Alright. Brian is sitting at a pretty... Not a very comfortable position, but he has he stabilized. He has stabilized the board. He has stabilized uh, the board. He most if, likely if, still wants to keep two forwards active, though. So that all, I think, I think, I think all Brian needs to do now is continue to play forwards up until maybe the critical point of four. Um, he should be able to go wide against Ice. Ice is not known to ha be able to pump out a lot of forwards, and as we already seen, Alejandro has hedged his bets on that goal by discarding Snows, which, if he had a Snow on the board. And a Shiva from the Terra, he could have easily won the match before, I mean, um, it, it because if you just got like a Opus Two, I mean Opus Three Shiva, mm -hmm. you could dole two, and then Snow would swing in and dole freeze another one. You can get That's by correct. three. So if you're, I'm wondering if the, if the play to, to to pitch to Snow is going to come back and bite him, and we'll we'll see, we'll see. Snow in congestion with Ghoul is fairly huge. Yeah. Uh, in this case, he did have it for a while until. Uh, well, oh, looks let's like Brian's got a play in hand. Oh. And uh, he's gonna play the t Ooh, Titus. Okay. Titus okay. is gonna come out to be pretty big at this point. Yeah, he's uh, talking about nine k. Nine k right now, right? Yeah. Moment. And when Waka swings, he's gonna be able to become a ten k. Oh no, eleven k. Eleven k. He's gonna go he's ahead himself by three thousand power. There you right. go. And uh, with Nono, he's able to reactivate Nono from that attack. Yep. He's going to go ahead and give it to Waka here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other Terra. Um, really exciting card on, on, the, on the Opus 4 end. Um, let's take a look. Oh, at this point Alejandro is looking at his options. Is he going to decide to... He's taking up he one, took damage. one damage. Okay. Uh, then uh, hit Celeste. Now Pink's coming in for second point of damage. And he's gonna take it. What? Oh wow! Two cards that he could use to f that he Alejandro could have definitely used right there. That's uh, two very key points of damage right there. He's gonna go. No, is is he gonna go ahead and, and dole the Titus and try to get a point in? That backswing is really gonna hurt. Let's take a look. Oh, he is. He's really using that goal. I don't know if he's using it in the most efficient way right now. He's, wow, he's oh, gonna he is gonna dole the pitch a devout for that. A devout would have been very helpful to grab anything else that can help dole okay. freeze at this point. He's sitting at a very large hand size. He has a lot of options. Let's see which one he decides he's to gonna use. Go ahead and swing for the fifth point of damage here on Brian. All right. He's gonna have to do something because if Brian draws into a Titus, mm -hmm. that could be game. Unless he keeps that ghoul. I mean, active. I'm thinking that maybe he has a game plan. There, there must have been a reason why he used a ghoul to slow down the Ketus. Right. Playing He's going to a Setzer. It's going to let him search for a, a six character? Correct. And if Setzer is broken, he would be able to dull freeze uh, forward as well. Right. I think that's the, the game plan he's going with. He wants to block with a Setzer, don't freeze another forward, and uh, try to go in. Hmm. He's still short one more. Uh, if you want to deal enough damage, go lethal next turn. So let's see what he's going to do. That's really, he's really hurting. He's hurting on that tempo. I think he might have played the, the ghoul a little too much and pitching too many cards here. I don't 
I don't see a path forward for him right now to get through this wind water efficiency because all Brian has to do is crack his archer and he should be able to crack his uh, Duke Lard. All right, and we've got a Koboloid. Oh wow, the Koboloid's gonna come in and really actually get a lot of value here. Um, He'll swing under all of the... And the a mime, part. okay. And a mime, wow. Wow, so... He's getting ready to untap his back out with that no-no. That really no-no is work. really going to get some, put some work because both Titus and Waka are huge right now. Waka's going to come in and be 12k? So no, 13k actually. 13k, wow. He's going to drop the Sarah. Okay, let's see. Titus is already going to be is, is going to be huge here. I really don't think that Alejandro has any, any recourse but to take this damage. I think he's trying to go for the win, that's why. Is he? But the Koboloid would be Koboloid's able to... going to be... Able to transform, transform into a monster. Right. But he won't be able to attack right now. It's his first turn But he'll be in. able to block. He will so be I able to that's, block. This that's the correct. main reason. I think... And that's going to put... Um, that's going to put Alejandro here at 5 points of damage. Wow, we're really seeing a lot of back and forth at this point. He went one way, then the other way. Right. Let's see who's going to come out on top. Oh, there's the ghoul. Another dole on the ghoul. I'm not sure this is the right play here. I think he's going all out on this one. Do you, is, is he going to try to hope for a, a Shiva draw? I don't know if Shiva draw is going to be enough, though. If he has an Opus... Koboloi will be able to activate itself. It's going to dole the mine. And then attack he's with the Terra, turn the Koboloi to block. And it's going to Shiva that. And, oh, actually, what? he just did it. He just did it. I think he did. And I think that's there game, you go. right? Woo! Wow. Just barely. Point. No cards exactly. in hand. Exactly. No cards in hand. He's baiting the Cobaloid to turn into a mo into a forward. And when he does on the stack, he plays that Shiva that was a clutch draw Shiva. If he did not draw that Shiva, that was game over. He was looking at Fatal. Wow. That is yeah. an amazing match right there. Mono Ice Ooh, pulling so it off close. over Wind Water. Brian did an amazing job here to stabilize. It was a it was a strong match here played by both players, uh, and it's, it's really it's really interesting. What did you like about that match, and what didn't you like about that match? I think that match was actually quite exciting. Uh, we're talking about the fact that uh, the control, the board control, the board presence uh, really went from uh, being. The ice player right. going in aggro to the wind water stabilizing that no no being a main no no being ball. huge yeah. really strong play the ghoul and the no no both right. over four and, cards and I think there's a there's a couple of things that that I didn't know if if would have paid off the ghoul being able to discard uh, so many cards I didn't think that was playing to him in fact I thought that Alejandro would have probably wrapped up the game a little bit sooner had he been a little bit more pragmatic with his use of ghoul but it all worked out in the end. We have yeah. to give our hats off to Brian. He did a very, very good job stabilizing the board. That early aggression with, with the Genesis, it hurts. It's hard to deal with. Oh, man. That discard, early discard, when you don't have your backup set up, it's, it hurts so much. It's, it's difficult. Uh, the right? early early game ghoul, wow. Um, really put it put him on the back foot. Right. And that was... What did you think about about him pitching uh, tempo plays like Snow uh, and, and Devouts to do this? I think he was going for the kill. Okay, I he was really just going so. for more aggro. I think he was trying okay. to put the maximum amount of pressure, uh, playing the aggro game sometimes. Right, right. You don't want to... It's really your decision to make. Do you want to build up your board if you think that you have a stronger end game? Right. And in the case of Ice, sometimes you're force on that big and you start right. looking at like a Titus right. and a Waka. Exactly, and what are you going to do? And, yeah. and I think I think Alejandro did a good job realizing that because Ice's endgame is, is practically not existent. You're, you're not going to be able to match efficiency of wind or water. You're not going to be able to match the strength of earth. <coughs> and there's just a lot of different types of tempo play that um, are all throughout Lightning that's past mid-game, things like Al Cid. So being an Ice player, you realize that if you don't get if, if you don't get, like, through winning between the mid-game, you're on a ticking time bomb. You're going to you're gonna end up being overwhelmed either through the, the breadth of characters or the depth in terms of strength. And I think Alejandro did a really good job to realize that and, and to really press forward with the aggression. Um, you know, and, and it's interesting use of ghoul. 
you know, it, it's it was. strong. It's one it was of these a very new... aggressive use of gold. Right, uh, right. Pitching Snow, which is a huge card, which works amazingly well with, with Shiva. With, yeah, Shiva with Ghoul. Pitching, pitching those cards, I thought was 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 a was a more of a misplay, but it ended up working for him, and he did was he was able to race the clock. Um, that top deck Shiva really was. That, oh wow! Right, hey, at least it was an EX burst. So right, he right. That, that, one. that top deck yeah. Shiva really just—that was it, and yeah. that was the only card he could draw. And it had to be—it had to be an Opus One or Opus Three Shiva. The Opus right. Four Shiva isn't going to help him here. So it was a very, very strong play, um, you know, and and just great matches all around. Yeah, right? you definitely saw what happened as you mentioned about the the ice mid game right. where the creatures a little too small. The walker right. started swinging in, the titan started swinging in, and you're looking at it and you're like, well, do I want to sacrifice my fours? But exactly. if you do that, you don't have fours you to attack you with and you can't go win. lethal. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to play a little bit with your life. And, and I think he got to the point where he he could eventually see the path forward. Um, yeah. Hats off to both players. Yes. Again, um, we're about to go ahead and jump into our uh, break before the Swiss round two. My name is JT. And this is Laurent. Welcome to the Break Zone and thank you for joining us today. Stick around for round two of Swiss here at the Petite Cup.